Let's get into it here, ranking the top seven quarterbacks in this class. No better person on earth to help us do that than Mike Renner, prospect guru. You can follow him on Twitter at Mike Renner underscore. We are going to not only reveal Mike's quarterback prospect rankings, but Mike is going to give his best NFL comp for each prospect. Number seven on Renner's big board at quarterback is Spencer Rattler out of South Carolina, only six feet tall, 211. Now, he started at Oklahoma. That 2020 season at Oklahoma was pretty good. I think arm strength questions and beyond kind of led to some inconsistency at South Carolina, but I am not the expert here. Renner, what do you think about Spencer Rattler's NFL prospects? I was really impressed when I flipped on his tape this past year at South Carolina compared to early on in his career, you know, the year and a half he started at Oklahoma. You really saw growth to his game. And now maybe the numbers don't show that, but he was working behind this past year at South Carolina, one of the worst offensive lines I've seen in college football. It was an atrocity from just like a, a blocking and also like an assignment standpoint. So a lot of free runners, he had to deal with a lot. And I thought just keeping his head above water in a lot of games and not making bad decisions with the football, I was impressed with. So, so he, he played his way into – Definitely a top 100 grade for me, closer to like top 75, honestly, uh, than so probably top of the third round. I could see him going the same range that Hendon Hooker went a year ago as kind of that just like, let's take a chance on this guy because there was enough to like. He has NFL caliber tools from a sort of athleticism in the pocket standpoint. He stands tall in the pocket. He will handle pressure well. He can evade and keep his eyes downfield and still deliver strikes. He has a good arm probably better than some arms than some of the guys that are going to go ahead of him in this draft class. So the NFL tools are there. I do just worry still about the decision-making. I know he avoided, uh, you know, ugly turnovers this year, but he still wasn't great in terms of taking chances down the football field. I thought he had a lot of opportunities that he turned down deep. And that's kind of been the case, whether it was at Oklahoma too. He was never a guy who really would attack down the football field. He prefers the quick game, the underneath passing game. Uh, to that. And, and I also worried about him not getting to his check down enough, especially this year when his off the line was so bad. His first instinct is to be a playmaker. And he's not athletic enough to be a playmaker. That's why I have the comp for him as Baker Mayfield, is that you'll see some ugly sacks on his tape, some ones where he's running around the pocket and still takes a 10, 15 yarder because he still thinks he's back in high school when he was a better athlete than all those guys. So he needs to get that out of his game. But there's enough to like that someone I think is going to take a chance on him middle of day two. Yeah, I remember this guy coming out of high school. Like he was a massive, massive recruit. The reason that he left Oklahoma was was Caleb Williams, yep. right? I mean, he lost yes. his job. Lost job, to Caleb yeah. Williams. Uh, he's also like, I mean, he was in college forever. He he's old. He's he'll be twenty four uh, in the first month of his rookie season. Not particularly big, six, like six foot flat, two eleven, and as you mentioned, like not not a high end athlete. Yeah, I mean to be. That small and not a high-end athlete scares me. I think that's scared the NFL to some degree. I see most of his big board and mock stuff is going very late third round. So, you know, I think he's not going to be expensive if a team wants to take a chance on Spencer Rattler. Number six on Renner's big board among quarterbacks is someone everybody's familiar with, considering what Washington did last year. Michael Penix Jr. going to be a 24-year-old NFL rookie. I mean, guy has a ton of experience, four seasons at Indiana, two spectacular seasons at Washington. I think there's a wide range of opinions on Michael Penix's NFL outlook. Renner, what do you think about Penix's NFL chances? Penix is, he's an interesting prospect, man. I really like certain aspects to his game and whether it was the fact that he really outperformed what he should have at Indiana, right? Like he, he was pretty much every stop of the way he has overperformed versus expectations of what he should have done in each stop. Uh, to me, he has a high end NFL caliber arm. Like it, it may not look the prettiest, his release, it's pretty funky, but he can really spin it down the football field. He has some real uh, uh, you know, liveness to that left arm, has really big hands, doesn't fumble a lot, and he doesn't take sacks. He, he only took 31 sacks on 1,759 dropbacks his entire collegiate career. Caleb Williams took 35 all last year. So he, he is very good at not taking negative plays. I think he could earn a job immediately, even if he's not like a top 15 to 20 pick. He could be like a, you know, early second rounder, but an Andy Dalton, Derek Carr-esque starts right away kind of guy. 
uh, at that point in the draft. Obviously has the experience to do so. I think I love his aggressiveness. He's a guy who's going to push the ball on the football field no matter the case. He's going to give his guys chances to make plays that can backfire on him at times. You know, he takes some some heaves it up sometimes just down the football field into bad to double coverage. And he has some bouts with inaccuracy, but there's definitely more to like than not to like. And he's a guy who's super driven. Everyone raves about his character. So I think he may fall because of the two ACL tears to his right knee, two shoulder surgeries, one on each shoulder. So there's a big injury red flags with him. I have the comp is Ryan Fitzpatrick, and I think he could be a shot in the arm for a team, maybe not ever reach you know franchise quarterback status, but could put up some big years in the right system. So I think he ends up sliding to either the back end of the first or top of the second, but I, I still like him a lot as a prospect. So he, he did not work out at the combine, I believe. Um, Correct. And then he went to his pro day and like showed like really good athleticism, yeah. but he didn't run like at all in college. Do you have any kind of speculation or, or explanation for why that was? Because I mean, he, he's like a legit, really good athlete, yeah. at, at least from an athletic measurable standpoint. He, he ran a four, six, which I think people weren't ready for Michael Penix mm -hmm. to run a four, six at his pro day. Cause like Evan said, he wasn't a runner in college. Yeah, he's not utilized in that regard. And when, you know, not a not a guy who breaks pockets and extends plays, that sort of thing. It just wasn't an aspect to his game. Uh, he's really a pure pocket passer, probably more so than any of the guys we're going to talk about getting mocked in the first round. But when you run in that range, you, you can still be featured in a running game. And, and I think it's something that could be taken advantage of more so at the NFL level. Just get him out in space with that speed. Yeah, the betting market has one of Penix or Bo Nix likely to go in round one, right? Because they've set the over-under for quarterbacks going round one at four and a half. We'll get to the four who are definitely going to go. And then the question is one of Nix or Penix. Of course, we do have a hot take from Renner. I will tease coming up here in a minute. Let's go to number five first on Renner's big board, and that is J.J. McCarthy, of course, out of Michigan, won the national championship. J.J. McCarthy was a big-time recruit coming out of high school. Now, it's kind of hard to see it when you're playing in this Michigan scheme. J.J. McCarthy only attempted 22 passes per game last year. But yeah, this was a guy who I think a lot of people thought was a game manager type. He'd go late first round. All of a sudden, people are talking about him going as high as fourth overall. Renner has him fifth in his quarterback ranking, so I assume you think that is... Not the best of ideas, Renner. What's your NFL outlook on J.J. McCarthy? He's he's the biggest wild card, biggest like boomer bust sort of quarterback in this draft class because of kind of all the things you said there, 22 attempts per game. And not only that, it was in the biggest games, they were a running team. You know, it was in the biggest games, he was not asked, you know, maybe you have to go back to last year's playoff where I think it was against TCU where he had to really light it, open it up, pass, did well in that, but also then threw some picks. And I think that's what I worry about is that he has a tendency to try to, he's a, he's a one speed thrower. He throws heat. He's a fastball thrower every single time. And a lot of times he was putting those over the middle of the field into linebackers. I mean, when he misses underneath defenders, he had more of those throws than anyone in this draft class. And so I will say, even with the limited attempts, though, one thing about his tape is it's all NFL drop back passing concepts when it is. It's not RPOs, pop passes, a lot of the fake attempts that mean nothing that you'll see on like Bo Nix's tape or either Caleb Williams tape as well. Um, so every every time he did pass, it was something that was semi-translatable. So th there is a lot to like of the athlete, too. I thought he was probably the best at manipulating pockets and basically navigating tight areas and still delivering the ball down the football field of anyone in this draft class. But I do just worry about that lack of touch, the inconsistency in terms of decision-making and just the fact that he never had it all on his shoulders. And it's just a completely different game to how he had to play quarterback versus someone like Drake May and North Carolina had to play quarterback in certain games where nothing else was going and it was all on him to do it. Um, or even like Michael Penix, who we just talked about, who is just every game you go in knowing I have to be the guy to win. That's going to change at the NFL level if McCarthy is drafted where he's rumored to be drafted. And so I'm just a little more worried about him than I am, I guess, the four guys above him on this list. He, he's He's been so polarizing, I feel like, throughout the process. At one point, there was a report from Tom Pelissero, who's really good, that um, – 
J.J. McCarthy could go as high as number two uh, to Washington. Then I feel now I feel like the momentum is kind of shifting away from him, and he might actually slip. There, there have been you know, like everybody thinks that the Vikings are trying to come up to get him. Mm-hmm. It seems like I don't know. Just the opinions are all over the board, and, and he's not an easy guy to evaluate because there's just not a ton of of pass volume on it on his on his resume. Yeah, yeah, and Vikings have the eleventh overall pick in this draft. It doesn't seem like McCarthy's going to make it that far, but Vikings have given themselves enough ammo to move up probably if they need to and they want J.J. McCarthy as rumored. So, yeah, super interesting. Another thing that it, that seemed to me to, to happen is like at the combine, his um, his buzz like went like crazy because I guess he was like really good in, in interviews. And, and apparently he's just the greatest kid. I mean, Jim Harbaugh you know, gushes over him. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it's He's... Like I'm, I'm finishing up my first mock drive right now, and like, I, I kind of want to project him to fall a little bit, and and, and this kind of supports that with uh, Renner having him fifth. Mm-hmm. All right, keep in mind these are Renner's real life rankings. If you're interested in our dynasty rankings, and those are fantasy centric, not real life centric, you can head to the site right now. Our dynasty rankings and rookie mo- rookie draft rankings are up. From a fantasy perspective, this is the guy I'm arguably most excited about. From a real life perspective, I get the concerns, but fourth on Renner's big board among quarterbacks is Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Of course, you guys know me. I am going to get very excited about dual threat quarterbacks who have elite rushing ability. Jaden Daniels last year, 135 carries, 1,134 yards, 10 touchdowns at LSU. Year before that, he ran for 885 yards and 11 touchdowns. To my untrained eye, he doesn't run as well as someone like Lamar Jackson, but he's not that far off. Yeah, the top four guys in this, I, I think, are top 10 picks. Uh, I really like the top end in this quarterback class. And with Daniels, to me, I'll just say the comp right off the bat because I think it is indicative of like the skill set. It's RG3. And this is obviously pre ACL, pre I want to be a pocket passer, RG3, where you can actually take advantage of the fact that, you know, you forget about him on a read option. And you can go 40 yards in a blink of an eye. You, you don't, you know, have your sort of rush lanes in uh, you know, the way they're supposed to be as a defensive line. And he sneaks out the back door and he can, he can really, you know, he's four, four to high four, three sort of speed. He runs away from everyone on it. So, so there's that aspect to his game. Now he's not a guy that you're going to run quarterback power with. I don't think he protects himself well. And of all these guys, I worry about his sort of injury concerns, maybe even more than Michael Penix in that he takes more shots. He, he when pressure comes, he tries to extend to a fault and will take sacks more than other guys in this class. And when he's out in the open field, he doesn't always slide. And when he does slide, it's not great form. And he definitely needs to work on that or else he's going to get banged up at the NFL level. But this past year on tape, he was the most accurate downfield passer in college football. And not just because he had two unbelievable deep threats in Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, who we're talking about in the wide receiver episode, but his deep ball touch was primo, perfect. And he's a very easy thrower. His motion is like textbook. He's going to be an accurate passer at the NFL level. And again, like all these things kind of you said about RG3, but I do worry about his ability to kind of work through, not not necessarily work through progressions, but pick up tough first downs in terms of like, this is a little hairy. First reads a little hairy. Second reads a little hairy. How do I fit it in there right on the break where it's supposed to be? I don't think we saw a lot of that on his tape. You saw him turning down some what I'd call NFL windows over the middle of the field more often than not because he could call his own number. At the collegiate level, that worked a lot when he could, you know, when you really outclass guys athletically, but that won't be the case as much at the NFL level. So I worry about him if he goes to a bad situation. A lot of people are mocking him to New England. If that's the case, I am very scared for his prospects early on and his health as well with that offensive line. But this past year, there's a there's a clear path, tried and true path to success with his skill set, uh, with utilizing him as a rushing threat, utilizing the play action game, and then attacking over the top. That if he goes to the right place, with the right office coordinator, the right talent around him, he could really put up some numbers. The profile that you just described, with um, you know a precision downfield passer, maybe not the greatest processor, great runner, led the nation in yards per carry, actually in yards per pass attempt. 
He passed for almost 12 yards per pass attempt this, this past year and ran for eight and, a, eight and a half yards per rushing attempt. The profile that you just described, it, it sounds like Justin Fields, actually. Um, I think he's a better yeah. pure sort of like – so Fields has that long release and mm-hmm. is a deliberate decision maker. I, I don't think – his timing was as slow as Fields was coming out. Like, I don't worry about that aspect to his game. Okay, good. It's more just like, to me, it, I'm trying to think of who he's probably like a Russell Wilson is who mm-hmm. I could see him being as a passer, where like there's distinct limitations to Russell Wilson's game, right? But when he had everything working, when you're attacking down the football field consistently, really tapping into that downfield accuracy you can still lead a high end offense. Another guy that I've heard him compared to Jaden Daniels compared to is uh, Randall Cunningham. And that comparison game from Herm Edwards, who I believe recruited yep. Jaden Daniels to Arizona state and played with Randall Cunningham. And I've always thought like, yo, Randall Cunningham, if he would have been the NFL today, like he would have been, and he was very good, mm-hmm. you know, during his time. But he, if he would be in the NFL today, he would be like a fucking badass. Uh, I, I don't know that, but Jaden Daniels seems like another polar, polarizing guy to me. Yeah, and polarizing the dynasty community as well. We already have him 15th overall in Superflex dynasty just for the appeal of the rushing upside. And if he hits, he's going to hit in the same way that like a similar way to which Lamar Jackson hits. And so the ceiling is just sky high, I think, in fantasy for Jaden Daniels. All right, let's get number three. I don't know if you're aware, uh, Renner. You're on Renner Island here. Uh, at number three overall. People are going to lose their minds because at number three, you have Bo Nix out of Oregon ahead of J.J. McCarthy, ahead of J- of Jaden Daniels. Now, Bo Nix was the number one recruit in the country, started his college career at Auburn, got to Oregon, and goes nuts as a fifth-year senior last year. We're talking 45 touchdowns, three interceptions, 4,500 yards. A flag on Nix, I think, is that he turned 24 in February. I mean, this dude is old, but yeah, Renner, people are going to lose their minds here. Nick's ahead of McCarthy and Jaden Daniels. Tell the people what you're thinking here. I, I don't get how I'm I don't get how there aren't more people who love Bo Nix's take truthfully. I mean, the numbers are off the charts. The, the sort of the production is there. The fact that he's the most experienced college quarterback of all time, because he started for five straight seasons, which, you know, was not allowed until the COVID year. And this past year, they're just like, there weren't bad plays on his tape. PFF had him charted with five turnover worthy plays the entire season. And I I know that, you know, this offense was gimmicky in terms of pop passes, screens, quick underneath stuff. It it was not a downfield attacking offense, but, you know, everyone's going to talk about his average depth of target being 6.8 yards on the football field. That was a function of the offense when there were downfield passing attempts, which obviously were like fewer and far between. I thought he was aggressive. I I thought he took good chances with the football. I thought he threw with anticipation as well, if not better than anyone else in this draft class. And and I think you've seen sort of the growth from him every single year of his career. It got better to me. It's reminiscent of guys like Jalen Hurts, where, you know, early on in his career, no one thought Jalen Hurts was going to be a prospect. Every single year he got better, was in the Heisman consideration his final year, and then goes to the Eagles and then, you know, becomes an MVP candidate with the Eagles. So I I think there's a similar sort of track with Bo Nix. And I also, with Nix and Daniels, the sort of revenge factor of their initial schools, it didn't work out. They had to transfer. That chip on their shoulder, I think, is a real thing with both of those guys, with how much you saw them improve at their second stops. And the one thing that really sold me on Nix is he makes no look throws more than anyone else in this draft class. He, he has a high level understanding of how to manipulate defenders with how he sets up. And he had a throw, gosh, I'm blanking on the exact school it was, where he lines up to the middle of the field safety with his feet to then throw a corner route across his body that just like Matt Stafford, Pat Mahomes, maybe Aaron Rodgers, you can count on one hand the amount of guys that do that at the NFL level. And Bo Nix was doing it in college already. So I think there's a lot to like about his tape. Now, the accuracy issues I get, even if his, you know, his 77.3 completion percentage is wildly inflated by that offense and the throws he was having to make. So you do see some accuracy concerns. You see skittishness in the pocket with his feet. Um, but honestly, like watching his tape, it looks bad with how, you know, his feet are all over the place. He's kind of trying to bail quickly out of pockets. 
but he sticks with concepts even while he's doing that. And so my comp for him is like Zach Wilson, if Zach Wilson could process the defense. Like it, he has high end tools, he has the similar play style, and that he wants to run around and kind of have it be on him. But then he also can read the defense and play with instruction the way Zach Wilson really never could. Um, you do have somebody in your camp uh, as a big time Bo Nix supporter, and that's our buddy Lance Zierlein, okay. who compared Bo Nix to um, Tony Romo, okay. who had like a borderline Hall of Fame NFL career. Um, and then I, I was listening to um, the Athletic podcast with Nate Tice, so I uh, played at Wisconsin, and um, you know, very smart guy. He compared Bo Nix to Taylor Heineke. Okay, so we got to – I mean, those guys are like on the same spectrum though, really, if you think about yeah. it. Tony Romer and Taylor, Taylor Heineke, it's just that Taylor Heineke isn't very good and Romo was really good. Sure. But yeah. but that gives you a sense of what kind of a quarterback that Bo Nix is. One, one more thing, Greg Cosell uh, said that he thought that Bo Nix would be um, a great fit in Sean Payton's offense. Yes, I've been mocking him to the, the Broncos every single like that. That is what he did at Oregon. If he goes to the Broncos, that would be a perfect fit. Yeah, uh, Broncos have the twelfth overall pick. I think it would be a reach based on people's big boards right now, but that doesn't mean that the Broncos wouldn't do it. Uh, current big board has Bo Nix uh, and Michael Penix right next to each other in the aggregate of the big boards, thirty first and 32nd overall. So yeah, super interesting there. Broncos is an interesting call for sure. Maybe Broncos think they could trade back and still get him. You know, it's going to be a real cat and mouse game. I think some NFL teams might be like, this guy's too old, man. But at the quarterback position, I don't know if I necessarily say that. These quarterbacks now can play until they're 35, 38. It's not like wide receiver and running back where you need guys as young as possible when you draft them. Yeah, I mean, Kenny Pickett was 24, right? Burrow, mm -hmm. 24. I think they've kind of thrown that out the window and almost like want the experience over the one-year starters or have kind of been the guys that are the scary ones in right. recent years, whether it's Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. So they're probably leaning more towards experience now. I mean, if you want experience, Bo Nix feels like a guy started yeah. literally yeah. 500 games in his career. It's insane. Uh, okay. Number two on Renner's quarterback big board is Drake May out of North Carolina. Ideal size, right? 6'4". 223, ton of arm talent, also ran for 449 yards and nine touchdowns last year. We just talked about the age stuff. Drake May won't turn 22 until August. Renner, what do you think about Drake May's NFL outlook? Yeah, I think him and Caleb Williams is number one on this list have sky high ceilings. They really tick all the boxes in terms of physical ability. On-field production was great. It, it was probably better as a sophomore changed OCs this past year, completely different offense, had some bouts of inaccuracy. And, and that's my biggest worry with him is he he's a real like natural player of the position. Like he's not the precise CJ Stroud where everything looks perfect. His pocket movement looks scripted, like not at all with Drake May. That's what my comp for him is like a slim Big Ben uh, way back in the day before he turned, you know, blew up and that Big Ben was never that guy who who was you know spot on with his technique. He just kind of went out there and rolled the ball out, and where it went, it went. But the same sort of mentality of just like I'm going to make a play, whether it's with my arm, whether it's with my feet, and he can. He's a great athlete at that size, can really run, can really make guys miss, and can throw on the move exceptionally well as well. So if you can just tighten it up a little bit, if there's like a balance there where he can get his feet and base more consistent when he's throwing, and kind of avoid some of those inaccuracies, I think he could be, you know, top five sort of quarterback in the NFL. That's just how special his throws are and where he really separates himself compared to the rest of this class is how he can work the middle of the field with anticipation, kind of that 15 to 25 yard range, fitting it over a linebacker in front of a safety. He just drills those in there in his sleep and doesn't have a lot of like ugly throws in that range that scare you. And now a lot of the games, it was all on him last year. A lot of times it was just him fighting to keep his head above water behind a bad offensive line with the receiving core that was not as good as it was the year prior, whose best sort of their best wide receiver was really a one trick deep threat. And Tez Walker that couldn't run, you know, if he wasn't open on a go ball, he wasn't really involved in the play. So I, I don't know what he's going to be at the next level. He, he really is. Um, there's opinions on him are all over the map, but from what I've seen, I think it's a really NFL translocal game, high end tools. And I have him as, you know, second best player in this class, QB two behind Caleb. 
He was very productive as a runner. He's got maybe some accuracy issues, as Renner alluded to. He's friggin' huge. That, that sounds like Josh Allen to me. Um, He's in that realm, for sure. Like that, just like big athlete. You know, and a lot of times, whether it's Jordan Love, whether it's Josh Allen, the big athletes who are like truly, I don't know if I'd put Trey Lance in that category because he was never a guy who was just like fluid. Like you never saw Trey mm -hmm. Lance make plays outside of structure with his arm. Um, so just like the big athletes that have that aspect to his game, I, I'll, I'll bet on with the track record. I also think that at, at maybe right after the college season, because I know he had some bad games um, at times this past year, maybe, like people were down on him and, and he was like polarizing at that point. But I think that things have like kind of normalized for him, and he's like the heavy favorite now to go number two overall. Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna mention that that you know the market still thinks Jaden Daniels has a chance to go number two, where JJ McCarthy has a chance. I think it'll be Drake May also to uh, Washington there, but yeah, we'll see. All right, number one is the guy that everybody has known about for the last few years. It seems like has a ton of fans. In his camp, it is Caleb Williams out of USC. Just absurdly productive. 93 touchdown passes in three years between Oklahoma and USC. Also ran for 966 yards and 27 touchdowns in his 37 college games. Renner, is Caleb Williams a generational quarterback prospect or merely the best quarterback prospect in this draft? I think he's a generational physical talent. Now... Is that going to lead to the best quarterback? You know, like somewhat, probably like, you know, Cam Newton was in that realm, right? Cam, I guess he was right before Andrew Luck. But it, like kind of that's how I view Caleb Williams is that the tools are too impressive to fail at the next level. He just, he has throws on his tape that go over 70 yards. He has the ability to throw from any arm angle he wants. He's, you know, he never ran a pre-draft 40, but it'd be in like the low to mid four fives and he can, he could be a, you know, NFL running back if he wanted to at his size. He's just a gifted all around athlete who, when he works within structure is actually really precise and technical with his footwork and with his, you know, base throwing. It's just, you don't see him go one to two to three much. And some of that's the offense that he's in with Lincoln Riley at USC where they knew the offensive line sucked, so it's a lot of one scheme up, one guy sort of plays, and then if that doesn't work, Caleb go be a hero this past year. But it's also when that was the case, when he did have those options, you saw first read, and then he was kind of skittish, and then he would want to try to make a play on his own. So a lot of hero ball on his tape that you may have to coach out of him. And I may have. You, you definitely have to coach out of him. But everyone's been saying he's like Justin Fields, and there is like a pros and cons that are similar to Justin Fields. But to me, the biggest difference – is the arm between him and fields like he gets it out quickly he has different arm angles he can throw on the run fields never really had those aspects to his game the way caleb does yeah. so it just just a supreme physical talent that maybe it doesn't happen year one right away but <clears throat> in time to me i, I comp for him as kyler murray on steroids it's just, it's just like everything about kyler murray make it bigger faster stronger yeah, I'm curious on, on the comp, Kyler Murray is valuable in fantasy in part because of his legs. Do you think Caleb will have the same rushing impact at the NFL level that Kyler did slash does? I think he could. Um, I, I don't think they're, you know, you draft a guy number one overall like him. I don't think they're going to subject him to that right away. And he definitely doesn't scramble as much to be a runner as Kyler did coming out. So so he, he scrambles to still be a passer, mm -hmm. even if, he can run to his game. So I think you're going to see a little bit less rushing production than Kyler did, even if they kind of have similar ability in that regard. So Renner and I went to the Notre Dame USC game yeah, last year, which was glorious because the, the year before I, I met up with uh, Renner at the, uh, the Stanford game, which okay. Stanford won over Notre Dame when Stanford, when Notre Dame was favored by 17 <laughs> this past year though, against USC, I think it was 48 to 20. If I recall correctly, well, uh, Caleb had three picks in that game, which was shocking because the year before that, Caleb killed Notre Dame. Um, do you know exactly what happened? I mean, did you go back and watch that? Uh, and, yeah. and what what happened in that game? So they 
Notre Dame came up and challenged their wide receivers and Caleb, you know, some of that's the offense wasn't scheming up like man beater routes and they, they do a lot of zone beating stuff with Cliff King, you're not Cliff Kingsbury's offense, I guess. Yeah. But also Lincoln Riley's offense. And some of that was their offensive line just got absolutely blown to bits. They, they were, that was the one thing, you know, people mentioned their skill receiver talent, not having Jordan Addison there. And yeah, it was different, but the biggest difference was they just couldn't run drop back stuff the way. So any drop back passing in that game was just like one guy lost almost immediately. So, so I took a bunch of sacks, made some bad throws. And I do worry about his fumbling. He had a ton of fumbles. If there is one glaring issue that I think could be his death knell, it could be those turnovers and just like, coughing the ball up a lot and then kind of spiraling from there is what I think you saw from him on tape, just like losing that confidence in games throughout the, uh, you know, when he did have those negative plays, but yeah, it was definitely just the town around him took a massive step back for USC. Um, we'll go number one to the bears almost certainly. And it's going to step into, I actually think a reasonable environment. They have Keenan yeah. Allen. Now they have DJ Moore. Cole Komet, I think is a bit underrated. They got Deandre Swift who can certainly play, in the past game, he's not a typical number one pick stepping into the worst situation ever. He's stepping into a very reasonable situation. So yeah, I think a lot of early optimism for Caleb Williams certainly makes sense. All right. That is going to do it for our, oh, I don't think there is anyone Renner, but is there anyone you think fantasy people at the quarterback position should know about? I mean, sleepers at the quarterback are very, very, very difficult to come by, but yeah, anybody that we didn't mention here today that you think fantasy people should know about? I'll give one interesting sleeper, and it's not really because he plays quarterback. It's Joe Milton, Tennessee. He is an unbelievable athlete, um, great size. I think he switches to ten tight end at the NFL level. And if he did, I'd be very intrigued to see how his sort of progression at that position went because I think he could be a Logan Thomas-esque dude if he were willing to make that switch. So that's the only one. After that, I, I really don't think uh, this quarterback class is particularly deep. By the way, market is certainly already on Caleb Williams in fantasy. His ADP in early best ball draft is already 108th overall QB 13 overall. So certainly expecting, community is expecting Caleb Williams to come in, start shredding right away. All right, that's going to do it for our look at the quarterbacks in this class. Be sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Subscribe to the audio feed. It is indeed free. We'll be back next time for wide receiver, then running back then tight end with all of Renner's rankings and comps. For producer Luke, for producer Ryan, for Evan, for Mike, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.